Hello guys, welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to discuss all about efflorescence. Okay, what is efflorescence? What is its definition? How it is defined? What are its causes? What are its types? And what are the sources of efflorescence? And in the end, we will discuss how to prevent this defect. This is actually defect in the building, which is obvious or uh, you must have observed on the ceilings, on the floors and on the brick walls. Now the question is why do we need to prevent this defect? Okay. First of all, this is mainly due to the humidity in your building and humidity is a best habitat for the growth of bacteria and bacteria in turn causes different diseases. So that's why it is important to prevent this defect. So cutting to short, let proceed to our today's topic that is efflorescence. So before we start our today's topic, if you are new to my channel, you are requested to please subscribe it and don't forget to press the bell icon to get video updates. So let's start. First of all, what is efflorescence? In French, the efflorescence definition means to flower out. Okay. Efflorescence is a white powdery substance that can be found on the unsealed surfaces including bricks, cement, lime, sand, aggregate, clay and admixtures. As you can see over here, there is efflorescence on the bricks, on tiles and in on concrete. Efflorescence is the salt deposit. It is actually salt deposit that forms on the surface of concrete, bricks, stones or walls. It has a white or grayish tint and consist of salt deposits that remain on the surface and water evaporates. So efflorescence is basically salt deposit which remains on the surface after the water evaporates. And how efflorescence occurs? What are its causes and how it is formed? It is caused when water with any soluble salts come to the surface through capillary action and then vaporizes. While vaporizing, it leaves the salt and basically what we see as efflorescence is the leftover salt. The thing we see in white color is actually leftover salt. Sometimes through hydration reaction, calcium hydroxide or lime is formed from Portland cement which is transported by the water to the surface then it reacts with the carbon dioxide from the air and produces calcium carbonate. So basically the one thing you see in white color is calcium carbonate which when reacts with the carbon dioxide from the air it attains this position or it adopts this shape. Okay, And the, uh, at the end cause efflorescence. That's why any material having Portland cement can cause efflorescence. Now, why efflorescence occurs? There are three conditions need to be exist for efflorescence to occur. First one is there are water soluble salts. If there are water soluble salts in the material, in construction material, uh, if the construction material contain water soluble salts, then there will be efflorescence. Moisture is present to make the salt become a soluble solution. The second cause for efflorescence is moisture. And as salts move to the material surface, the moisture evaporates. This makes the salts crystallize, which results in efflorescence. So these are the basically three reasons which are responsible for efflorescence. Types of efflorescence. Basically, there are two types of efflorescence. First one is primary efflorescence. Efflorescence can happen at different times. Essentially, it can either be a problem from the beginning of a building construction. Okay, it can emerge or you can say it can uh, come uh, across uh, during the beginning of the building construction or the process can occur over time. Primary efflorescence usually occurs within the first 72 hours during the curing phase or appear due to excess water being present when the material was manufactured. Okay, so primary efflorescence occurs during the first 72 hours, that is during the curing phase, or uh, you can say 
the material that was using for construction or for the making of bricks or for the making of cement it must include some type of soluble salts that why primary fluorescence occurs the second type is secondary fluorescence secondary fluorescence is a result of outside moisture pulling the salt out of the building material water or moisture from the environment mixed with the salts are absorbed and infiltrates over the time and then after a while white or gray matter appears as it is obvious in these pictures okay these are the examples of secondary inflorescence when moisture penetrates in your building and the soluble salt starts reacting with this moisture and this thing appears on your surfaces like ceiling walls or you can say floors and what are the sources or causes of fluorescence uh, now there are certain building materials that are basically uh, this that are basically the source of fluorescence in your building the first one is brick as you can see over here since it is porous brick may absorb soluble salts to determine whether a fluorescence will be a problem for your brick take a single brick and immerse it in a distilled water for approximately 7 days and let the brick dry after the 7 days and compare it to a brick that was not immersed okay if you notice a powdery white material on the brick it likely has a fluorescence you must have understand how brick is the cause of a fluorescence the second material responsible for a fluorescence is cement portland cement used in mortar and grout highly contributes to a fluorescence in these materials according to brick industry association bia it is high in alkalis okay the earth or uh, the raw material that you use for cement is high in alkalis and is more likely to a fluorescence than other types of cement conversely it is important to note that all types of cement contain some amount of water soluble alkalis making any cement vulnerable to a fluorescence and the third material that is responsible for a fluorescence is lime lime is a water soluble material that produces calcium chloride when reacts with unbuffered hydrochloric chloric acid the calcium chloride is what may surface through buildings material and comparatively lime can help improve bonds between mortar and brick and make masonry materials more water resistant the fourth thing is sand or aggregate sand is used in grout and mortar and is not water soluble on the other hand other materials can contaminate soil sand which ends up contributing to a fluorescence so that's why as i mentioned before the material that are you going to that you are going to use for construction should be pure and should be free of any contaminants for building project it is best to use sands that has been cleaned and it is contamination free to help minimize the chances of a fluorescence developing and the fifth element or the you can say fifth material that is the cause or source of a fluorescence is clay building brick and face brick consist of clay which contain salts that are highly soluble clay may react with common building salts like calcium sulfate that result in a fluorescence admixtures and admixtures bond and strength can increase the possibility of a fluorescence with building materials generally it is best to err on the side of caution with admixtures if you are unsure what is included in the admixture itself you may want to avoid this solution entirely okay admixtures are ad avoided as much as possible because if you have no idea what uh, what are the ingredients of this admixture can cause a fluorescence in your building now how to prevent a fluorescence this is most important to learn that uh, if the um a fluorescence has occur in your building now how to prevent or what are the root causes of a fluorescence so that you can prevent it from very beginning uh, any building materials that come in contact with the ground may be susceptible to a fluorescence 
बट इफ यू नो द रूट काजेज ऑफ ए फ्लोरिसंस यू कैन सेलेक्ट द राइट बिल्डिंग मटीरियल एंड प्रिवेंट दिस प्रॉब्लम फ्रॉम अकरिंग ए फ्लोरिसिंग साल्ट are associated with a number of building materials including calcium sulfate and in fluorescing salt source commonly found in bricks now calcium sulfate which is the main cause of fluorescence is mainly present in bricks and the second uh, chemical is sodium sulfate often seen in cement brick reactions potassium sulfate noticeable in many cement brick reactions now these are the chemicals which are the which are responsible for fluorescence and before selecting the right material for your building you must assure that the material is free of these chemicals calcium carbonate may be discovered in mortar or concrete baking sodium carbonate frequently seen in mortar and potassium carbonate like sodium carbonate commonly found in mortar and vinyl sulfate usually found in bricks magnesium oxide often present in bricks so in the end before choosing the right building material is a paramount for any building project if you understand the impact of a fluorescence on various building materials and how to spot or stop a fluorescence you should have no trouble minimizing this problem so that's all for today thanks for watching in the end you are again requested if you are new to my channel please don't forget to subscribe it and press the bell icon to get more video updates